You may all be wondering, Halloween, what are you doing on this Halloween, you spooky fellow? I'm going to tell you. Um, I'm not going to be doing a game review, that's for certain. Uh, I'm not going to be doing a game video or a game LP or anything like that today. What I am going to be doing is doing a movie review. Now, oh, oh, hold up, before you all run in fear and cower at the terrible, terrible movie reviews I tend to do, um, it's a horror movie, so it at least has a theme. And being Halloween, the night for terrible, terrible things, what more terrible thing could there be than me doing a movie? Yay! I know I'm bad, I'm very sorry, but I'll try and get to the point. Uh, I'm going to be talking about Event Horizon today and sort of like why I find it's a really, really good horror movie, even though it contains a lot of things which I normally bitch about. I'm going to give you a very brief overarching point of the plot. Uh, those of you who've seen it won't need that much of a recap because it's quite a vivid, a, a vivid one, I imagine you probably remember it. Those who haven't seen it don't want it spoiled by yours truly here because it's really worth seeing. What I will give you a general just down it is a sci-fi movie uh, set in space, uh, sci-fi horror movie I should say, set in space, where a essentially a ship goes missing and a crew go and try and retrieve it and just try and discover what happened on this ship. Uh, lots of horrible, distressing things happen when they get there mainly due to the experimental drive used to make the ship jump between points in space. And they want to discover what happened on the ship, and eventually how to get off the ship. Uh, the, the best way to describe this would be a haunted house film mixed with Hellraiser in space, along with a few... Uh, a few, perhaps, Lovecraftian-style horror going on. We have an eldritch abomination in... Spoilers, spoilers, just in case... If anyone really wants to see it, stop listening here, perhaps, and go watch it. Okay? An eldritch abomination, the fact that the ship, basically being semi-sentient, semi-alive after the trip of where it's been, um, controlling people and attacking people, something we can't understand, certainly. We have the Hellraiser-esque, and the fact that the, one of the main characters goes completely ape shit, cuts out their eyes, and gets barbed wired, and starts going around on a murder spree. And we have the haunted house stuff, and lots of things going bang and boo and spook in the nights, and while trying to discover what on earth happened in this haunted house, where the haunted house in this case is the ship. Okay, um, major spoilers, I guess, over for the time being. Um, but, okay, so all of that together sounds probably a little bit weird, and when I tell you also it's chock full of jump scares, is, there's definitely a lot of jump scares in the film, it's chock full of kind of really gross out horror. We're talking like visceral, gory horror. And when I also see the other scary thing, it's done by the Resident Evil director. God! And I know, I know before, W.S. Anderson, I think it's Paul W.S. Anderson? But before you all freak out and run in fear, those of you remained after I told you I was going to review a movie, uh, today, please, because it's, it is a really good film. And I feel that when given the right subject matter, this director is, well, really good, actually. He made a great film. Uh, so with that out of the way, like, if it has all these things in that sound terrible, then why is it a good film? Because... It is unique, it is compelling, and it is interesting. All the things you really, really want on a spooky film. Let's put it this way. If you have never seen this film, and you come down to sit there and just sit down and watch it, and you've, you haven't been told anything about it, you will come away with an experience you will probably not forget. It is extreme in the gore and, and the visuals. It is uh, sort of incredible in some of the, the themes and thematics it has going on with the, the way it does its horror. Um, and it also will leave you pretty spooked. Uh, if you don't laugh through some of the segments. I know some people probably find it cheesy. Uh, I, I, I don't, but I know I imagine some of you will. And it'll leave you with certainly a lasting impression. Now, let's let's cover sort of more individual things. The, the fact that, again, spoilers, but I've already gone for this, whatever, you're probably in for the long haul now. The fact that the sh this ship has transformed, essentially, perhaps, 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 being the word here, into a sort of eldritch abomination, like this, this thing that could be alive and controlling people and sending them insane, the fact that behind all this, there's some sort of other universe that is so horrible that being in it even briefly will screw you up so so badly that it'll just it'll just do them beyond belief. I mean, they were the crew were there for mere mere less than a minute, I think, and they they were already butchering each other and sort of doing other unspeakable things to each other, removal of eyes and things. In later scenes, you see the hallucinations on the character of what things would be like in this hell dimension where you've got people impaled on walls, you've got very Silent hill visuals, especially from the first game. You've got people hanging upside down, things going through necks, maggots. Very, very visually intensive things. Something you certainly won't forget anytime soon. And then you've almost, you've also got like almost this character sort of study of the main character slowly losing his marbles. I mean, this alone, you've, you've got, you've got um, Dr. Weir, I think it's, yeah, Dr. Weir, who is Sam Neill of Jurassic Park fame, and he starts out the film pretty, already, obviously, pretty damaged in the fact that his wife killed herself, uh, and, and looks like one of the things keeping him going is the discovery of his ship, his, his engine, and he's excited again, he's got something to sort of drive for, 
slowly becoming more and more unhinged as this ship take like does something influences his mind. Perhaps, well, not the best person, perhaps some, some sort of scientifically driven person, someone who gets driven to worse and worse things. He cares about other people, even towards the end, into his complete descent into madness. But he really, he sort of has a lot of in the the hour and a half roughly of the film. He has a lot of character development. In the fact that he starts out. As a, as a standard, if not driven, scientific mind to a completely like nutso murderer, S- simply because he, he's trying to do what he thought originally was right and got massively influenced by this d- horrific ship. Um, like I said, even even on his descent into madness, he still cared about other human beings until it, it was too far gone for him when he cracked. Um, you've got some of the other characters who like their their past has been brought up. All these people seem to have massive ghosts in the past, skeletons in the closet, all brought to light on this terrible haunted house of a ship. Uh, you've got someone who lost a son. You've got like a, a man who obviously has been into some dodgy war zones who can't let go of the past. You've got someone who lets on burn alive. All sorts of horrific things, uh, all coming, all coming, you know, to light because they're stuck on this bloody thing. And uh, then you also get one of my personal favourite things uh, of the entire film. Again, if you want to watch it and you're still listening, for love of God, go away. Um, no, I'm kidding. You, you stay, please. Otherwise, all this talking would be kind of pointless. But you get this part of the film where they get this tape and they listen to it. And at first, all you hear is this garbled mess, some Latin speech, and you think, what you know, what the hell was that? And they slowly, throughout the film, unravel what on earth happened until they can play the tape. And you see the looks on their faces as. He says, right, we're about to activate the drive. Three, two, one, hooray. Um, seize the day, carpe diem. Bang! And then all of a sudden, this horrific image turns up. And, and the looks on their faces says, oh, they just... This, this is perhaps the worst thing they've ever seen. And immediately they need to get off the ship. They just c- cannot deal with this anymore. And they don't want to end up like these poor people did. A ship that was sort of out of our reality for a few... Like a minute at most has gone... A, a sort of bent. A dark ship has come back and started murdering people. I know the fact that a spooky ship coming back from like some sort of weird black hole drive is kind of stupid. But hey. Um, yeah, th- I mean... There's a lot of jump scares in it as well, like I said earlier. Normally I am the world's biggest advocate against jump scares. I hate them. Uh, but however, I find with the way the film constantly keeps attention, it really does them well. It doesn't necessarily cheap them out a lot. It sort of keeps you on edge. Uh, this is no cry of fear. This isn't just boo, boo, ooh, you scared, yeah, boo, you scared, yeah. You've got the constant building of attention. And then you've got entire scenes where they didn't even need, they didn't need to rely on jump scares because of how horrific all the imagery is. Like, some of the stuff here is terrifying. You've got a man willing to, you know, kill themselves and do a terrible thing, only to realise at the last second what's actually happened, and everyone to watch helplessly as this man gets completely crushed by outer space. All sorts of things like this. And, yeah... The, the the simple atmosphere of this film, great, absolutely great. Uh, the ending is is I shouldn't say it, I shouldn't really say, it, but the the ending is is a particular favorite of mine. Just the, it's sort of, not saying a twist ending perhaps, but certainly a, a sort of continuation of the film's themes and very very cool. Um, sort of again the descent into madness. I think you could probably call this as as a film. Uh, that that's kind of all I had to say on as a review for the film. There's a, there's a few bad points of course. Um, uh, Soundtrack-wise, I think I, I don't normally do like audio stuff, like sound effects stuff are quality. Like the, the ship sounds creepy, but I completely forget the music. Like you, it's like it doesn't matter. It's there. Uh, there's some racial stereotyping going on in there. It's pretty poor. A uh, character in particular called Cooper, like man, like I don't know what they were doing there. That was that was some sad, sad stuff. Just like uh, in this case, it was it was like he got the funny, you know, the funny guy, and it just didn't really work. Jeez, like what? Not, not sure what they're thinking there. Like I said, it's no, by no means a perfect film, but it is a very, very enjoyable film if you fancy watching your Halloween night. And yeah, I've rambled on for nine minutes about a film that I've tried to dance around the plot points and end up spoiling a few of them, but uh, if you've never seen it, it is on Netflix, both UK and US. I, even if you're not in either of those places, just proxy to one of those two if you don't have it on your own Netflix. Or hire at your local video store, I don't know. It is a great film for Halloween night. And that's it. Um... I know that wasn't a particularly great like sort of review or overview, or particularly in depth, but it's certainly why I enjoy it. Um, I, I probably gushed a little, but I I feel quite passionately about that. This is a good film. This is a fun film and a very very memorable film. A lot of shock and stuff that makes it a must see, in my opinion. But hey, um, what was I going to say? I was just an abu- uh, no, just a view with an opinion, as SF Debris always says. So do take me at it or don't take me at it. That's just my opinion, and that's that's why I like Event Horizon. I wish you all a fabulous evening. Uh, enjoy your Halloween. Enjoy your candy, chocolate, horrible 
horrible apples that you tend to get off old ladies. Whatever. I hope you have a good time this evening, and I hope you do something spooky. Thank you very much, guys. Oh, yeah, if you like this kind of thing for some awful, weird reason, and you want to hear me ramble about other things I enjoy movie-wise, do let me know, and I might do a few, because uh, I, there are some films I like, and uh, if you're willing to put up with me like in this weird, sort of bizarre, podcasty style rambling, then why not? Either way, that's ten minutes probably too long, so thank you very much for listening to me. I hope you have a great evening.